Hi guys, welcome to Last Humans Tech. I want to talk to you about shared libraries and we're going to focus on the Fedora system right now. Now what shared libraries do is they allow more efficient use of all these apps because the apps can all share a generic library of files rather than each app needing its own particular library and makes the apps more cumbersome. There are two kinds of libraries. There are dynamic libraries and there are static libraries. The dynamic libraries are on the system itself and the static libraries would be in the application itself. The advantage to having static libraries in the application would be if a particular system does not have the proper shared libraries this would still allow the application to run because it would have its own built-in libraries to use. A library naming convention will normally be start with the lib, it will have a name, it will have SO for shared library and a version number. So that is what the libraries will normally look like on the system. Now the first place you will find your library configuration file, kind of your top level master, is in the Etsy. And we are in the Etsy directory and we're going to look at a file or cat a file called ld.so.conf. That's basically libraries, shared libraries configuration. Let's see what that says. That is saying include this particular path for anything referencing this directory needing these libraries, it's going to include this new path, which is a directory and everything called conf in it. It's kind of a pointer. So let's go ahead and change directory into this configuration directory and see where we're at. Now we're in the Etsy directory. Let's do an ls and see what's in here. There are a few configuration files here. So let's say we want to know where the libraries are that iSCSI would use. We are going to look at this lib iSCSI configuration file. And what that's telling us is this is where the libraries are for this particular application. And for the kernel ones, I actually didn't see any response on those. But you can kind of go in here if you're trying to find out where particular libraries associated with the application are and the configuration will usually give you a path to tell you where these libraries are. Another command that you can use is ld config and you do want the dash p option and this will show you all the libraries and paths on the system. Let's pipe this to more to slow it down. You can see it has 937 libraries. That is a lot of libraries. And you can also see the naming convention we talked about here. They start with lib, then it has a name, and then it has a .so for shared library, and it has a version number, 0123.16, whatever it may be. Let's say we want to find out where the shared libraries are for a particular program you would use an ldd-v and then type your particular command name and you're trying to find the, the libraries that this command would use. Let's see what happens. It cannot find this file because you did not put in a, a full path. So let's do a where is RPM, a command we learned in some earlier videos. And even a which is even more accurate. So we can see user bin RPM so let's go ahead and try this command again with the full path and see if this works. This did work and it's going to show you all the libraries which the RPM command would use. Now there is one other way to formulate this command and that is going to be the xargs command which is going to take the expression so for example the first command has to be read in a proper way so xargs or zargs as some people call it would formulate this output in the correct 
format so this LDD-B could then understand and use that output. And you can see that also worked. So that is an alternate way using the XARGs. Some of the commands won't pipe together the way you want them to. And then XARGs can take the output in a different way and hand it off to the next command in a more usable fashion. That's all for the quick tips on libraries in the Linux system. Hope you enjoy the video. Thanks for watching.